So today we're installing the Phenolic Ablative R10,000 nozzle in the fuel grain liner. It's uh, bonded in place using high temp RTV 600 or high temp room temperature vulcanizing silicone that cures based on the ambient temperature and how much humidity is in the air. Uh, because this is Florida and it's hot and humid as hell, it cures quite quickly. So uh, that's something I've found out in the past. You can't really take your time while you're doing it, at least here in this specific environment. Um, you know, if I did it under air in a less humid environment, it would give me more work time, but I don't have that luxury at the moment. Hopefully soon I will. Um, that all being said, we're just going to get this nozzle uh, slapped up with some silicone and, and jammed in the liner and get it all squeezed together and cleaned up. So the liner itself has been already scuffed, cleaned, and wiped down with acetone. Um, it's all been marked out. It's all pretty much ready to go. So uh, you're going to see me put a bunch of silicone, spread it all out and then uh, seat the nozzle in partially and then remove the nozzle and make it all uniform so I have an even coating around the entire nozzle so there's no uncoated portion that does not have a high temp RTV on it. So the nozzle itself is actually held in by the boat tail um, and the fuel grain liner which sits up against the injector bulkhead once this is all installed uh, it really can't go anywhere so the the rtv process is just for sealing the nozzle in place and holding it in place during installation and removal of the fuel grain liner and you know provides that high temp seal also so shortly here you're going to see me bouncing up and down on this thing and really putting some ass into it um, and then i'll quickly dart off to get my handy dandy uh, nozzle remover which is a 3 inch 6061 quarter inch wall aluminum pipe with carpet duct taped around it just so I don't destroy the uh, graphite in there um, remove it and proceed to smear more high temp RTV and bounce around on it some more to get it all jammed down, squeezed out, and settled in place. Real quick, you'll see I only cover about an inch and a half of that nozzle on the first go around and i'm just spreading it uniformly around the circumference of that because when i push that in it's actually gonna work its way up and spread all that out so you'll see me also push and twist it in um, and that's just the method that i've come to use and i found works well just the removal can get a little tricky sometimes especially if you have an extremely tight fit uh, nozzle. And this is a pretty snug fitting nozzle. Uh, I machined it to some pretty tight tolerances. Um, I actually ended up sanding it down just to make it a little easier and allow during installation, I wouldn't remove all of that sealant um, when pressing it in. So that's what you see going on here. Got my handy dandy nozzle remover. And uh, yeah, it, it takes some effort to uh, get this thing in and out in a timely manner because 
that silicone's already starting to gel up right now. So you can see I installed that nozzle like three quarters of the way and it actually worked that silicone up more than half the way uniformly. And now I've pressed it back out and I'm just going in, filling out the, the voids and evenly spreading it around there. And then we'll do the final seat on it. And then use a pox popsicle stick to clean up the, uh, the perimeter around it and then uh, let it cure. So you can see I'm really starting to put some ass into it and I keep wiping my face because I'm sweating bullets. It's like 103 in here right now and uh, it's freaking hot. Um, but we pretty much got it wrapped up here and uh, I'm just going, excuse me there, just going around with a popsicle stick and removing all that excess. Um, and then I'll proceed to shoot some acetone on a paper towel and clean up all those edges real nice nice Just ran off to grab a flashlight and look at the inside to see how much it oozed out. Um, you want to try to remove as much as that as possible uh, because you are going to pour the fuel in here um, and you don't want any extra RTV in there that could mess up that process and basically allow you to not get fuel where you want it because it's covered in RTV. So I just grabbed a 36 inch long uh, titanium tube. It's the quickest and easiest thing I could get my hands on. Wrapped paper towel around it and some tape, shot some acetone on it, got in there real quick and kind of cleaned it up. At this point, uh, the silicone has really started to kind of like gel up. Um, it's still pliable and sticky. Um, but you just, you, you want to get that all cleaned up. I mean, I'm pretty anal and meticulous. Uh, it has its pros and cons. Um, so that's what you'll see me do here in a minute.
so this is what I was saying before in that earlier clip. Uh, I go in with that titanium rod and I end up wrapping uh, paper towel and some tape around it with some acetone on it just to get in there and clean up that little extra silicone that oozed out when I was pressing it all in and getting it all seated. And that's pretty much it for installing and sealing that nozzle into the fuel grain liner. Uh, coming up next, we're going to get this liner set up to uh, pour some fuel in. So I'll see you next time.